Hey there, it's Prakash, head of product of Xano. Uh, today we're gonna go over part three, the final video of our database series. If you haven't watched the first two videos, I recommend that you do that. We'll put that in the links below. Um, part one covered the basics of a database where it belongs in a in backend infrastructure. And we also covered the differences between SQL and NoSQL. In part two, we covered the traditional way that database is queried. And we also set up this workspace, which is basically a job board application where companies can post uh, jobs at certain locations. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about how you query data from the database and bring it to your front end. Um, and the way that we're gonna do that is basically using a technique called add-ons. And that is kind of a proprietary feature of Xano, similar to GraphQL, that allows you to add on to the data that you're getting um, from one table using tab uh, data from another table um, in the same API uh, call. And the second thing we're gonna talk about is uh, joins. And that kind of gets into this many-to-many -many relationships. Uh, and I'll kind of show you examples of each one. So let's actually go uh, through our tables and maybe add a, a couple more pieces of data to make this more interesting. So here within company, we have two companies. I think I'll probably leave that as is. We have multiple locations uh, associated uh, or that can be associated with each company. I'll go ahead and go back. Uh, for the jobs, we have two jobs here. You know what, I'll go ahead and add two more jobs. I'm gonna just say um, customer support and I will put this uh, one at Xano, and then I will do, um, uh, let's see, uh, front end engineer. Okay, great, front end engineer, and we'll just do this at Google. I know they're kind of similar, uh, but that's okay. We'll put this one here in Los Angeles, and then uh, what we'll do is, I don't think we have any in Paris yet, so we'll go ahead and do that in Paris. Alrighty, so now that we have Paris, uh, so we've added a couple more jobs. So now uh, let's go to location. We have th our three locations, uh, not gonna change anything here. But what I will change here is within the owner uh, or the user table, I'm gonna change um, each user to be an owner of a company, right? So rather than this jobs array that we created, I'm gonna get rid of them. And I'm gonna actually just do a table reference to the company, right? Because I'll just say that each user is an owner. So uh, I'll go ahead and I'll say that I am the owner of Google and we'll do Michael and we'll do Michael um, at email.com and he's the owner of Xano. Okay, so um, now we have some stuff uh, to play with. So in looking at the relationship between these tables, you, you can click this fancy show table relationships if you'd like. You can see that a user uh, is associated with a company. That's because a user owns the company. You can also see that um, a job uh, is associated with a location uh, and it's also associated with a company. So when we think about how we're going to take all of this data and display it to our front end, let's work on one thing at a time. Let's first go to a company and display its associated owner and the different jobs associated with the company. So this is uh, the case of like a one-to-one -one mapping. So one owner uh, or an owner is associated with one company and then a one-to-many relationship. Uh, a company can have many jobs. So let's go through that right now. So let's go to the, our API and let's go to our default API and we're gonna go to the get company uh, route right here. If I wanted to add a brand new endpoint, I could do that, but I'm just gonna use an existing one. So when I run this right now, um, you can see that it's returning uh, the two companies that are in my database table. And it also uh, returns the array of locations, right? In the form of IDs. We're going to work with the locations and turning these numbers into actual places later. Um, but for now, I'm actually just gonna hide them because I don't wanna work with them. And the way I do that is I click here on the, uh, the query all records function. I go to output and I can go to customize. And I'm just gonna take out this locations here. So when I save it and I press play uh, or run and debug, I can see that I'm just getting this minus the locations. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do to send to our front end is give me not only the companies, but maybe give me the owner associated with the company. So I'm gonna show you the unique power of add-ons. So I'm gonna click right here in the function stack. I'm going to click output, and then I'm gonna add on to this response. 
right? And I'm gonna create a new one. And it says, number one, what do you wanna add? Well, I wanna add from the user table. That's where my owners live. Do I want a single item, a list, an item count? Um, I can get the data any way that I want. Because it's a one-to-one -one relationship, uh, I don't need a list, I don't need an array, just give it to me as a single item. So I'm gonna click single item and uh, I'm going to map uh, the user company ID, right? Because I'm getting the company, I'm hitting the company database table. That's what I wanna map the, uh, the table on, right? So I'm just gonna take that out. Um, user of company, I'm gonna click create add-on and you can see already that the company IDs automatically, Xano knows and it's, it's mapping the fields together and remember, it knows this because we did a table reference uh, within the user table to the company. And so I'm just gonna call this owner, right? So I'm gonna click done, I'll click save. So now when I run and debug this, not only am I getting Xano, but I'm getting the owner right here. I can see Michael and all of the associated information. Awesome, so I'm getting the owner. Now let's get the list of jobs so uh, associated with a company. So I can do multiple add-ons here. So here, uh, I'm going to do another add-on and I'm going to create a new one. And this time I want the list of jobs and I want this as a list of items. And here again, I'm going to do this by the company ID within the jobs table. I'm going to click next and I'll click next and I'll just call this jobs and I'll click done, save. And now when I run this here, I'm getting not only the name of the owner, but I'm getting the jobs associated at that company, which in this case, there are two jobs. And then here at Google, uh, I'm the owner and um, I have uh, two jobs associated with it here, a software engineer and front end engineer. Okay, so we've you can see that what we've been able to do is we've been able to take, let me just silence Slack. We've been able to take um, a single endpoint and using add-ons, we've been able to add the owner to the output using that relationship. And we've also been able to add the associated jobs, right? Um, using both these add-ons. So now that was the one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationship. Let's do the many-to-many. -many. So going back to the database table, I can see that a, uh, a location, for example, let's say I want to look up a location and look at all the jobs associated with it. Um, a job can have many locations and a location can have many jobs. And uh, the way that we set that up within Xano is we have a location table and we have the different locations. And then in the job table, we have that array or list of relationships. Now, some of you may be asking, well, wait a second, don't you need the relationship map uh, to the location table as well? Within Xano, you don't necessarily need that. With add-ons, you can do what's called a reverse add-on, which I'll show you here in a minute to get that information. So as long as the relationship exists somewhere, you're able to get the data using add-ons, okay? So again, we're looking in the job table that has all of the different locations. Locations doesn't need anything here. So let's show you how to go ahead and do that. If I go to the API and if I go to locations, I'm gonna go to get location. And if I run this, I can see that I'm getting all uh, three of the locations. But remember, we want the jobs associated with these uh, locations. So normally, again, I could go through this add-on route over here, but I wanna show you how an add-on is constructed because unlike GraphQL, you have a little bit more control over the query uh, and I'll show you how to do that now. So within the library right here, I'm gonna go to add-ons and you can see these are the two add-ons that I've already created. When I did the user of the company or the owner of the company, that took a company ID and it returned the user. And what it did is it made sure that the company ID in the table reference was matching the company ID um, coming out of uh, the company table, right? So if you wanted to control um, exactly how this was retrieved, you could do that here. So let's create a brand new one. And this time we're going to do, um, we're gonna uh, do a job and we'll do job of location, right? Because that's what we're, we are pulling locations already. Then we wanna get the jobs. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna do a table reference on the input because this add-on is gonna take the input of the location. So I'm gonna go table reference and I'm gonna say location. So then we already told it, we uh, told the add-on we wanted to query the jobs. So I'm gonna click on the job here. And then the first thing that I wanna do, because it's the many-to-many -many relationship, 
um, we want to do this thing called an inner join. And this basically is going to go into the job table and it's going to look at that array of locations and it's going to make a virtual table out of that. So the way that I do that is I hit this pencil over here. I click this drop down and it shows me not only all of the tables, but it shows me the arrays within that table. So I'm going to select within the job table, that's locations array, and you can see it's setting up an inner join for me. So it's going to uh, take the merge between these. Uh, it's basically going to have the job table and the location array join together. So then I'm going to then add a conditional and I'm going to say um, that virtual table that I just created up here, that location ID coming out of the virtual table that's in that array, I want to make sure that it equals the input that I just specified up here, that location ID table reference. So I would go over here to input. I'm going to click location ID and I'll click this ignore empty values. What this does is it says if you if a location ID is not specified, just display everything. I don't need to do this because it's an add on, but uh, it's just best practice. I'll just have it there. I'll click done and I'll click save. So again, what's happening here is this add on takes a location ID. Then what it does is it goes to query the jobs database table. It creates a virtual table basically the, the, via an inner join that looks at the locations array within the jobs table and it matches. It makes sure that it matches to the input that's coming in from the add on. Okay. So I'm going to click save here. <clears throat> then I'm going to go back to my API. I'm going to go to location. When I say get location over here, you can see it's only returning the three companies. Now let's add on what I just created. So let's go to output. I'm going to click add on. And then I have um, job of location. That's what I just created. Xano automatically knows that the location ID is mapped to what I specified in the add on. And I'll just call this jobs and I'll click done. And you can see now in the response, not only am I getting the location, but the jobs associated with the location. So I'm going to click save and I'll run this. And you can see that in Los Angeles, there's a software engineer, a front end engineer and a UX designer. In Paris, there's customer support. And in Berlin, there's a software engineer. Now, again, to clean up this response, I don't need the location IDs which are being um, brought in from the jobs table. So no problem. I'll go ahead and customize that response within the jobs add on. I'll click customize response. I'm going to customize it and I will just get rid of the locations. So I click save. And so I'll go ahead and display this. And so now you can see Los Angeles, very clean. Um, I'm getting all the jobs associated with it. So you can imagine how this displays on the front end. We're crafting these API endpoints to have a page that shows the different cities and then the jobs associated with them. And then in our an, another API endpoint, we went and we got the company. And when I run this one, uh, on the front end, it's going to pass the name of the company. It's going to pass the owner of that company and then the jobs associated with that company. And then I could do that other add on to just like I showed you to show the names of the locations all in one API request. So hopefully this gives you a good primer around one to one, one to many and many to many relationships within Xano and how you use the magic of add ons to link all of the data together and to present it. Uh, in your front end the way that you want. Let us know if you have any questions and uh, we'll see you in the next video.